Guys, this video is brought to you by freedomraffle.org. They are giving away a brand new Tesla Model S Plaid. We love doing giveaways and we love it when you guys win these cars. So head to freedomraffle.org to support our Afghan allies and hopefully win a brand new Plaid. Hello and welcome to Denver, Colorado. Welcome to an empty parking lot and welcome to the Mercedes EQB. It is pretty amazing. The global launch for this car's big brother, the EQS SUV, is happening right here at home. And Mercedes brought a few cars along for us to test drive. And I said, hey, do you mind if I grab the EQB? I haven't driven one. They've just gone on sale and it's such an interesting car. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go for our first drive together. You're gonna see me drive this thing literally for the first few inches back in a parking garage, coming over to here. And then we're gonna talk about the different trim levels, a full tour of the exterior and interior. And uh, we're actually gonna drive both versions of the EQB on sale, the 300 and the 350, both being all wheel drive for Maddox. So let's get into everything Mercedes EQB. And then of course, very soon, we'll be spending more time with these uh, to do all of the range tests, the charging tests, all the stuff, the nerd stuff you wanna see. But for now, you and I will be driving this car together for the first time. And here it is. This is the Mercedes EQB. Very similar, pretty much identical styling, aside from a few different things up front with the grill, to its combustion brother, the GLB. Now it's no secret I'm a fan of the GLB styling. I called it a mini G-Wagon. I like the boxy design. And it's a platform sharer with its brother, the EQA or GLA. So basically the GLA became electrified, becoming the EQA. And I guess Mercedes said, hey, we already make a boxy one. Let's just do the same thing to it. Now, of course, it's starting with a combustion car underneath and adapting it to electric, but I'm gonna tell you right off the bat up front, I think Mercedes did a really smart job here in terms of converting it over. So what I'm gonna do is talk about the different trim levels. We're gonna drive both of them and I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of this thing front to back. I wanna say a huge thank you to Sparrow World for sponsoring today's video. Hey, these guys are doing something pretty incredible. They are supporting our forgotten Afghan allies through this wonderful charity, which you can find on freedomraffle.org. All you have to do is purchase a $150 ticket and you're immediately entered to win a Tesla Model S Plaid. Guess what? Sparrow World already has the Plaid, so as soon as you win the raffle, it shouldn't take long for you to get the car. On top of that, you have the best chances ever that I've seen of winning one of these cars in the raffles that we've done here. And that's because Sparrow World has only sold about 20% of their tickets coming up to their deadline October 1st. So all you have to do is head to freedomraffle.org to support our forgotten Afghan allies by purchasing some tickets. And of course you're entered to win that awesome Model S Plaid. Best of luck and thank you to Sparrow Worldwide for sponsoring today's video. Well, with Denver in the background and a little bit of wind noise, I do apologize. For those of you who know, I shoot most of my videos actually on iPhone. I've just upgraded to the new iPhone 14, and I have to say the wind noise is worse than my 13, so I may actually switch back to filming with the old phone. Anyway, let's get into the EQB. This is starting up up front not looking good to be honest i've opened the hood they actually let you open the hood unlike eqs which you can do but it's not user accessible according to them and take a look at everything in here echo echo <laughs> you can just tell that this car was not built with electric in mind to start you have tubes going everywhere wires going everywhere it's such a mess you can see these giant motor mounts that are adapting the electric cradle to fit onto the combustion mounts and it's just like whoa this is a big red flag to start not looking good so let's talk about what powers this thing first of all of course we have led headlights as standard on this one tail lights are really nice as well this one's on the 19 inch wheels 18s as standard on this one this is the one up has these blue accents to match this blue paint, I think it looks really good actually. It's a little bit of a different blue, but I think it works works pretty well here. And so, yeah, I mean, let's just go into it with the full understanding that this was a combustion car first and then they slapped an electric drivetrain in it. No denying it. 
But I did speak with one of the product managers for Mercedes, and they said they didn't just electrify it, they did a lot more. A lot of small changes to the interior, to the build quality, things with different harmonics, noises. So because, you know, typically you would have a four-cylinder engine in this that would drown out the noise. Well, they actually tightened up the interior, used some different materials to make it quieter, and we'll drive it and we'll see if that makes a difference. But here's the thing. Battery pack, 70.5 kilowatt hour gross capacity, 66.5 usable. This one is about rated at 248 miles being the GLB 300. And it actually, maybe it's 250. Anyway, I'll put it up on the screen because I didn't expect to actually film this car today. But the 300 gets a little bit more range than the 350 by about 20 miles. My understanding is they use the same drivetrain and battery pack. So 66 and a half kilowatt hour usable on both trims, we'll be driving both today. Both of them are 4Matics, and I believe they use the same motors, a permanent magnet rear motor, and then an induction front motor. And in my eyes, that is really the perfect drivetrain setup for something like this. It means you get the low down grunt of a permanent magnet motor, good response from low speed on the rear axle, and then you can actually shut off the front axle when cruising on the highway for efficiency without flux-related losses, unlike a permanent magnet motor. To me, this is one of the best powertrain setups, so that intrigues me. I'm like, okay, maybe we're on to something here. And then, you know, you come around to the back and like it looks pretty good, but I've saved the secret sauce for now. You can option this car. This particular one is not. They didn't bring any along with seven seats. Now, this is a significantly smaller car than a Tesla Model Y, at least visually to me. And you can get a seven seat option. And Mercedes tells me like, hey, you may not want to sit back there for a long road trip, but if you have some friends or kids you want to throw in the back, like they'll fit. So this is a seven passenger electric SUV with all wheel drive starting at $54,000. That's impressive. No tax credit available. This one is built in Hungary for the Chinese market. They build them in China. It does have a really nice flap here, BMW style. I was like, why isn't anyone else doing this? Well, Mercedes is doing it. Really love this, really good. So we have an 11 kilowatt AC onboard charger, 100 kilowatt peak DC charging, they claim. About 32, 33 minutes from 10 to 80% on this particular one is what they claim. Of course, we'll do all the charging tests, but 100 kilowatt peak, okay, that's not so class leading, is it? Well, we'll talk about competitors and everything like that, and it may not need to be. Very similar to EQC. Mercedes has never gone crazy with charging speeds. Back seats, looking good. Fold flat, look at that, pretty sweet like that center armrest very nice let me just push this seat back here good room in the rear i easily fit in the back i'm six foot one plenty of knee room and headroom here i'll show you really quick plenty of knee room you do sit quite high in the seat but even so let me show you plenty of headroom with the sunroof even in the back feels to be scalloped here so i fit totally fine no issues at all Really a wonderful looking interior. You can tell it's more of an entry level Mercedes in terms of the leather quality, but build quality feels significantly better than the combustion one, I will say. Even back here in the combustion one, I think I have a clip, maybe I don't have it anymore, where I would squeeze these and it would just creak and creak and creak. All of these seem to be screwed together better, nicer materials, less noises. And I think that's where they said most of the effort went for the electric one. Really good looking dashboard. You can see thigh extensions for the seat, three air vents up front, two in the rear, already thinking this would be a great Uber vehicle, a really nice Ubering vehicle or ride sharing vehicle, but it is quite expensive. So we'll get into the pricing here, but actually this car wasn't on my radar for the longest time. And I was like, EQB, I don't know. And then it just randomly showed up in America and at dealers, they didn't tell anyone. <laughs> they were just like, it's here and it's on sale. And now they're presenting it and we'll be able to do some stuff with it. But really a great looking car, definitely higher quality than the combustion GLB equivalent and seemingly pretty quick. Seven seconds to 60 in this one, six seconds to 60 in the 350. We're talking, I want to say 180 kilowatts up to 220 kilowatts respectively, plus or minus good driver assistance, lane centering available, all of these things. So what do you say we jump in and drive it? And then we'll go return this one, 
hop in the 350 and hit up some twisty roads. I think that will be pretty fun. Well, you join me inside of the EQB at the moment and it is time to head out for our first drive. You join me in a parking garage where we are trying to squeeze our way out of here. And um, we're here for the global launch of the EQS SUV. Now, the EQB, like I mentioned, is actually already on sale. And I was like, hey, do you mind if I like grab one of these things? So in this video, we're actually gonna drive two EQBs. And since we're in my home city, we're in Denver. I mean, I live one hour north of here. Uh, we might pick up some friends along the way. Why not? Let's go have some fun. Very rarely do we get to go on these programs and they happen where we are so it's kind of great and uh yeah drove in from home didn't have to fly anywhere it was really awesome this is so cool so we're in the eqb the standard model again and i just have it in key up settings which is comfort drive mode in regular drive and already i can feel that we're on a very steep incline and so creeping torque is very strong you can i don't know if you can see this but it's using almost 30 percent power when i lift off the brake at low speed just to creep us forward so creep goes no matter the incline which shows me that it's a target for speed not a target for creeping power which is a little bit different than a combustion engine which doesn't increase the power for creeping so that is interesting but at least it feels pretty natural and pulling out now welcome to denver colorado in an eqb first off i've recently drove the glb the non-electric version of this and i was a little bit disappointed with the build quality with just the way everything kind of felt on the inside the chintziness the creaks um and and the updates that they made to eqb to make it quieter on the inside to make it a little bit better built are immediately apparent just sitting in here i mean instantly the thing feels a lot quieter a lot better built the materials are a little bit nicer and again i specifically chose this car to review first because this is the least expensive one they had this is sort of a, a low option car it's the 300 not the 350 um and of course we'll have a 250 front wheel drive coming and i believe to the us at some point as well so first off steering wheel feels great nice big steering wheel different than the glb love the wheel the leather material is a little bit of lesser quality than let's say an eqs but it actually feels nice in the hand the sizing is truly just the best mercedes does steering wheels almost better than anyone no weird trapezoidal thing like the ix no weird yoke like my model s this is just a nice wheel and so much about a car is, is about just having good inputs to everything and this has all of that um, so other than that seating position great headroom big glass roof right here two panels of glass I guess this does open up and turn into a sunroof yes it does there we go opens up baby let's see how far back it goes and pretty far but not all the way so that's pretty awesome we'll close that back up for noise instantly noticing much better ride quality than the combustion version this thing feels so much smoother so much more solid now there is an adaptive damper that you can select which this one doesn't have so this is a, a fixed damper setup and so far it feels pretty good mercedes are meant to be sort of smoother not so much hardcore shredders but to me this feels pretty nice steering ratio okay pretty good switch gear still the plastic this thing again for the price spec my guess is this one probably has some options probably 60 62 63,000 plus or minus somewhere around there that is not cheap money but it is model y money we're not too far away this one's a five seat configuration again you can option with a seven let's try the power because that's what's interesting here a few thousand dollars saving going for the the 300 instead of the 350 let's try it oh fine you don't need any more than this and there's 60 seven seconds zero to 60 totally fine brake pedal blending pretty good actually um weird i had some abs over that undulation and it cut all regen so it doesn't do a uh, regen through abs having that rear permanent magnet motor means it's probably primarily using that and then blending in the front motor and i can hear the inverter whine for the front motor so just enough yep 
where you can hear them start whining. But wow, really smooth inputs. The brake pedal, the brake pedal, it's like so much better than EQS. Now I'm gonna put it in full regen by using the left paddle, it's D minus. I'll go through the regen settings here in a second. But one of my biggest complaints with EQS was that the brake pedal falls away from you when it blends regen off throttle. So let me cover the brake and see if this does it. Nope, perfect. Okay, so Mercedes knows how to build a good braking system in their EV, they just didn't do it with the EQS. And so even here at 95% state of charge, we are getting all the regen, huge regen, goes all the way to 100% regen. It'll do, I think, 170 kilowatt regen, something like that, 180 kilowatt regen, oh, quite a bit for a car of this size. Oh, wow, I came into this, honestly, totally transparent with quite low expectations because I didn't love the combustion one. I think this car looks great. I think it's the right size, but I didn't love the build quality, the ride quality, the way that dual clutch operated in the GLB 250. Um, and I really wanted to like it because I think it's such a cool car. But now that this one, I'm in the electric one, and this is again, the standard electric one. Wow, I, I would drive this. This is a great car, really nice car. And uh, I have a friend who I actually, I think I'm gonna recommend this car to. So I have it in D minus, which is one pedal driving. Let's try not to crash into the car to the side. And I don't know if it'll come all the way to a stop, but let's find out. Coming up here to the stoplight, full off throttle. No one's behind us. Coasting, coasting, coasting. So not full one pedal, brings you to five miles an hour. And then I can blend friction brakes. So let's break it down now that you've got my initial impressions which are hugely positive quiet rides nice love the steering love the brake pedal and i hate the brake pedal on the eqs i think that's the major problem for me with that car um okay so key upsetting comfort mode drive this is how the car is designed to start up let's try it out great acceleration more than enough power Love that you have this permanent magnet on the rear for the instant hit, and then it blends in the front motor, which is an asynchronous or induction motor for that sort of higher speed torque, hitting the brake pedal, coming to a stop, wonderful. There's also a D plus, which we're going to try. And then if I hold either one of the paddles, it will go to D auto, which is a distance-based regen. And I've found myself using this occasionally. So always a creep mode, no matter what we do. Let's try D plus and see what happens here. I'm gonna lift off. Well, the garbage truck's in the brake, so we're not gonna try it. D plus still does some regen, it looks like. Yep, it goes to about 25% regen, maybe not quite that much, but about 20% feels, yeah, about 25% regen it's hitting right there. Feels normal, actually. I quite like the D plus. The D plus is like our e-tron in full regen mode, so it's still, very aggressive on the regen, I would say. If this guy is stopping here, we are gonna squeeze past very soft suspension. <laughs> but as it should be for a Mercedes, the, the thing for this is it's not meant to be a Canyon Carver, it's just meant to be a city cruiser, a commuter. And that's exactly what we're doing. I'm just cruising up and down some urban roads here in Denver. And um, yeah, feels pretty good, I have to say. Soft and squishy as it should brake pedal blending into friction. I can feel that point. Great brake pedal. I'm going to drive it in D minus. I think that's how I prefer to do it. The D auto stuff's a little bit weird because sometimes it feels like adaptive cruise control, full power, and then full regen. Big regen, huge regen. <laughs> wow. That might be just as strong as my Rivian. That's cool. All right. We need to try turning radius and a few other things, but call me impressed. I did not think I was going to like this thing as much as I do. This feels awesome. Certainly drives nicer than a Model Y around the city, I have to say. Not as spacious. Wow, great turning radius. Not even rear steer, of course. This car doesn't have rear steer, but look at this. It's like, is it better than an ID4 rear wheel drive? It might be. This is crazy impressive. Okay, now let's try sport mode and let's try some handling. This has fixed suspension, so that shouldn't adjust, but soft but direct as you would expect, falls over on itself. But definitely the rear is getting in and digging a little bit. I mean, I, we could drive it on a mountain road. I think we'll take the 350 out for maybe a twisty road blast. 
and we'll try the highway in that one. But I wanted to see if the power was enough in the, the base trim. My impression, I really don't think it, you need any more than this. Now, if you're at a dealer and that's just what they have available, then, you know, fine, get what they have available. That's the hard part with all this is you can't just, you gotta go with what the dealers have, but these are already on lots and sort of waiting for people to buy them. I'm really, I'm really into this thing. I would love to drive this car. All the inputs are great and I didn't expect it. So in terms of drive modes, we have individual, sport, comfort, and eco. I've tuned individual to be everything in comfort mode, but ESP backed off a little bit because I'm weird. But let's try eco mode. The way eco mode works is regen very strong in eco mode. You can go to the kickdown switch. It gives you 75% power, just like EQS. Then I can hit the kickdown switch and it'll give us full power. So that is the reason that there is a kickdown switch at the end of the accelerator pedal. No motor cogging at low speed, by the way. Let's just put it back into comfort mode and inch it forwards a little bit on this uphill. A little bit at low speed, you can hear some harmonics, but, but very nicely tuned, I have to say. And the one thing I am curious about is, is there a launch function in this car? So left foot hard on the brake, flooring it with the right. Oh, it torques over at full power. So this thing probably will launch pretty well. We'll try it here when the light goes green. Holy smokes. Who knew this was gonna be so good? And I love that this probably had the least fanfare of any launch. Left foot hard on the brake, flooring with the right, pop off. Fine. Ramps up at about 30 miles an hour, gives full power. Wow, you don't need any more than this. Not every EV has to be a traffic light blaster. This is, and it's soft and it leans back a little bit. Just feels like things are working, but a wonderfully tuned drivetrain, wonderfully tuned brake pedal wonderfully tuned steering and the noise quiet i'm hitting some massive bumps here let's hit all these potholes wow not a squeak or rattle solid solid and i did would not describe the previous version as solid so there we have it this is the base car the base eqb love that there's plenty of air vents front and rear looks good let's jump into the eqb 350 that is basically the same layout same battery but juiced up on the motors i don't know if it's actually a different drivetrain or just software i think it is just software and so let's flip around head back over there and see what that thing's all about but wow really impressed here really impressed just finished filming the intro that you watched earlier. I know it's a little bit out of sequence, but I thought let's do a little bit of a competitive analysis now that I've driven this thing and I've gotten to know it a little bit. Um, and let's talk about the competitors in this space because this is the most heated space in the EV segment. There's Audi Q4 e-tron, which is a real direct competitor. There's Volkswagen ID4, which also honestly is a competitor. There's the... Um, Hyundai Ioniq 5, EV6, Genesis GV60. Those are the hot competitors. Tesla Model Y, expensive, but so is this. Um, both not getting tax credits at the moment. Uh, both seven seats. Very soft suspension here. And so to me, the big thing that this is losing or lacking isn't necessarily the range, although it's not class leading. It's showing 201 miles, but I've been ripping it around at about 90% state of charge. Again, that's guesstimate. We'll run it through our 70 mile an hour test because Mercedes seem to just go and go and go. So I, I don't want to use this as a reference point. It's EPA rated in the mid 200s, depending on the trim, it changes a little bit, but I think it's the same drivetrain, so maybe a wheel difference. The big issue with this car is the charging. Volkswagen ID4 charges now at 135 kilowatts for the US market. Same with the Q4 e-tron. This charges at a peak claimed of 100 kilowatts. Now, of course, we're gonna have to bring it to a charger and see what we can actually get out of it. But to me, that seems like not enough. And I think if you're going to be spending a lot of time in the city, commuting, home charging, and taking the occasional long distance trip, totally fine no issue 100 kilowatt twice a bolt twice what a bolt will do people still drive those across the country and comment all the time that i'm silly for saying they charge too slow but when you're paying up for 
you know, mid $50,000 range to start low 60s with some options and you're only getting 100 kilowatt charging, to me, mm, kind of a bummer. No question, it looks the part with the Mercedes stuff. There's a very much a status thing. People want to drive it. No question, it's quiet and comfortable and, and, and very actually soft to the point where maybe if you drive it too aggressively through corners like this, it kind of leans over. It feels like it's picking up a wheel entirely. It's pretty wild. I went the wrong way as usual. I actually almost moved over here years ago. Um, and so when you start looking at this car's nearest competitor, which in the premium segment, I would say Genesis GV60, I think this looks a lot better. I actually like the driving position better in this and I like the inputs better. Um, but you can't ignore that that car charges at 200 plus kilowatts, 230 kilowatts, and this charges at less than half and that could be worth a buying decision all on its own. So I have to throw that out there that you're paying for the badge on this thing, no question. It's more expensive. It feels it when you drive it, and it, it's not a sporty car, at least in this trim. We'll try the 350, left turn only, making a U-turn. Look at that turning radius, amazing, and beautiful Denver off in front of us. Beautiful day, actually. Nice and chilly. The hot summers are over, thankfully. Yeah, so, so when you really, if you analyze this car in a vacuum, wonderful vehicle really great as soon as you start opening up and you look at all the competitors and we'll use this as part of you know when we do our electric suv comparison probably towards the end of the year or early next year i'm going to bring them all together and compare them i think we really need to look at that charging piece as being being a very important metric for some and it might mean nothing for others some people will just never take this on a trip and will never fast charge it and that's fine also, it matters about the curb. If this sits at 100 kilowatts all the way up, then that, that's not too bad. But it's got a relatively small battery pack, 66 kilowatt hour usable, much smaller than ID4 being 74 kilowatt hour usable. What is it? Something like that? Um, 77 gross, 73, 74 usable? I forget exactly. No, oh, no, it's 77 usable, 82 gross. Much smaller battery pack, and you're not really saving any money. And the brake pedal is a little bit odd actually now that i've been driving it a little bit it feels great if you're smooth with your inputs but if you're on the brakes and move the car around or adjust your braking pressure regen kind of freaks out a little bit it it is a really nice car but when you analyze it against everything else you're like wow that's a lot of money for this thing so we just need to go into it understanding that let's go see what the 350 is like it's four thousand dollars more base price than this you do get some standard equipment as well uh, included and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that one drives in comparison to this hopefully it has the adaptive suspension so we can play around with that and now you join me in the EQB 350 which has the extra power to it everything else feels the same gotta open up the sunroof it's nice out let's not hit anyone and uh, let's see if we notice any immediate changes what's interesting about this one is no active suspension either I don't know how much that option costs and we'll have to see if the suspension is tuned differently from the 300 to the 350 in its base standard form. I do love how much regen there is on key up. I mean, without even going to D minus, it really slows down to five miles an hour like nothing. I don't think you need to crank it up or hit the paddles. It also shows me Mercedes has confidence in a one pedal like system. Let's just try the power, shall we? See if it's any different. Oh big difference so much more on the front axle there the rear motor feels to be doing the same now i can feel a very front wheel drive hard pulling effect that is interesting and not the most premium it's always nice to have this push from the rear rather than a pull from the front my head is get the base one honestly and you get more range if you get the at least according to the epa but i think it probably doesn't make much of a difference either way so i think we're going to see a popular EQB 300 versus 350 take rate in the US. The front wheel drive will be interesting as well. I think that'll be branded the 250 uh, and it might use the same power as the front motor in the in this one, the juiced up one. I'm just guessing here. Mercedes doesn't really list the individual power outputs of the front and rear motor um, individually. So I'm just guessing based off of my one, <laughs> one block experience, but I, I think it's pretty good. Um, like the UI, I love MBUX. It's the best because you can control it from the right side of the steering wheel here to adjust everything over there. This is all your driver assistance stuff on this side. Oh, crap. 
Why did he just slam on the brakes like that? Left foot hard on the brake, let's launch it. Spinning front tires. Wow, this is significantly faster than, <laughs> it needed even more brake pressure than what I gave it. We'll have to launch it again here. Not that this is meant to be like a, like a blaster. Ripping the five series. People in Denver are freaking shred, man. I don't know what's going on around here in the last few months, but Denver has turned into a racetrack. That is what has happened. So, all right, who do we have as our opponents here? We have a Toyota Highlander. We've got, oh, the Aviator plug-in hybrid. Those are not slow. I think 500 horsepower, almost 450, something like that. You get the, the 3.5 with the electric boost in there. So I'm gonna go left foot to the floor, floor it with the right, launch it and maybe we'll find some twisty roads maybe we won't i at least want to take you around an off-ramp it doesn't really matter if this car drives well here we go torqued over just roast the front tires okay so in terms of drivetrain tuning the base one's actually better i would say <laughs> mostly because oh now we got the five series to drag race good thing we got the fast one it's just the 528 here he goes let's see if we can keep up with him it's some lady she's full beans and we smoked her. <laughs> we are going way over the legal speed limit, allegedly. <laughs> so we smoked the 528 at least. So that's good. Um, <laughs> with the aftermarket, uh, the aftermarket uh, spoiler, but at least it doesn't have an M badge anywhere on there. So that's a pass. That's fine with me. So great. Let's exit to the right up here. I have to say driving around every day, you're not going to feel any difference between the EQB 300 or the 350. This feels a little bit firmer to me, maybe a little bit louder. That doesn't really make sense. Could be a wheel and tire package thing. Yeah, definitely a bit of a suspension change, still soft, but I would say that the 300 is a little bit softer than this at least in my initial impression. And we'll do a little loop-de-loop -loop up here. So we're in full sport mode, everything is good to go. Let's test the full handling, the around the corner. I love the sizing of this car, the way I sit, the steering wheel, it's all really, really good, I have to say. Really loving it. Just wish it charged twice as fast as it does, then it would be a no-brainer. Coming into a corner quite quickly, stuffing it in. Oh my gosh, it still has the very, top heavy feel even though the battery's in the floor okay so in terms of feeling i think it's definitely a kinematic change it definitely feels a bit stiffer but when you really get it on the limit it's like whoa leaned over so not a shredder i wouldn't want to do really aggressive you know lane change or weight transfers with it over and over in a high grip situation i think they probably had to under tire it a little bit would be my guess to help it not have issues in a rollover. I don't know if it would or wouldn't, but let's go, let's do it again. Braking test on the way in, ABS to the floor. So when you drive it like this, it's, it's composed, but it's soft and it does an okay job, I would say. Well, there's no one there, don't freak out, blind spot. So, my recommendation, I don't think I need to drive it too much farther, is go for the, and this one doesn't have active steering or anything, it does have a limiting function, but no driver assistance in this, so there's nothing to test. My recommendation at the end of this, let's, let's wrap up the video, shall we? Driving the EQB for the first time. We'll do all the testing, of course, over the coming weeks as they enter into our local fleet and we're able to play around with them. I think driving them in comfort mode is the best, rather than in sport mode. And my recommendation is to go, if you have the choice, save the money, go for the EQB 300. I don't think you need the extra power. This is pretty quick, no question. It definitely feels faster than something like ID4 all wheel drive. It's definitely more immediate. And, uh, and my guess is it will hold that full power to a lower state of charge, similar to um, you know, EQS would be my guess, versus ID4 that uh, has a power limitation at, once you get below 80% state of charge, it doesn't give you full power anymore. Um, and, and also same for Q4 e-tron, which is priced more accordingly with this. I think value for dollars where this car struggles. Again, like I mentioned earlier, if you review it in a vacuum, pretty good. You can tell it's a combustion car. It's not totally, um, I would say, 
designed from the ground up to be an EV without question under the hood is just a disaster that just doesn't look that just doesn't look good I would say um, and I don't really know how to get back to where we have to go saved routes we need nope nothing saved so I'm just gonna be guessing but the turning radius is wonderful. The ride quality is wonderful, assuming you're not buying this to go, you know, tear up a back road, which no one would be. Um, the inputs all seem pretty good, except for when you load the car up weird with the brake pedal. But if you're deliberate and you drive it normally, um, it's a way better driving experience than the Q4 e-tron right off the bat. I can tell you that. Um, I would I would choose this over Q4 e-tron, and that would be the closest competitor, I would say. But could I choose this over an Ionic 5 or EV6? Well, if I didn't have to fast charge, I think the answer would be uh, yes. I actually love the way that this drives and feels and the steering and all of the stuff that matters to me about a car. I would probably get in this if I just had to go across town over any of the other ones. And I, again, I think I prefer the 300. It feels smoother than this for sure. Um, but if I had to buy an only car, which when we're talking about fifty to sixty thousand dollars, which is this thing sixty grand that we're in base, roughly fifty seven and fifty eight, uh, I don't think I could pony up the dollars for it because I would need fast charging for me personally. Now, for someone like my sister who lives in Florida, warm weather, who doesn't really drive that far but wants to zip around the city, she flies whenever she needs to go somewhere. Um, this is sort of in her pricing category, price range. It's got the right image, and I know she would love driving it. It's got all the connectivity you would need. CarPlay, when you plug in your phone, I don't believe wireless CarPlay with MBUX, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, I don't believe. And um, it's totally good for that type of situation. So there you have it, the Mercedes EQB. Uh, a friend of mine bought one, he loves it. Would you buy one? Do you think it's worth the money? It's definitely a premium upcharge for the badge, but then it, it feels much better built than the GLB combustion equivalent. So there you have it. Thanks for watching another out of spec reviews video. Hope you enjoyed the time with the EQB. Plenty more to come. Range testing, charging testing. The charge testing is going to be really interesting. And uh, yep, we'll see you on another episode soon. Goodbye from Denver, Colorado.